What's up, everybody? Welcome to Backlog and Beyond, the podcast where we talk about the old video games we want to beat and the new ones we play instead. I'm your host, Nathan Hawkins. And I'm your other host, Jeff Zavatero. And this is episode 17. <laughs> Nathan looked right at me because he knew we didn't put the episode number in the script. <laughs> So if there was a slight pause, it's slight pause because I was scanning the entire document. <laughs> He's like, "Where is that?" Oh Never. man! Well, <laughs> welcome back, everybody. Um, thanks for hanging in there with us. We appreciate the support. We see uh, that you guys are listening, and uh, we love you for it. Uh, we got a good show for you today. We're going to be talking about uh, some uh, some big news, um, Ubisoft forward, and we're going to be playing some Ten Words or Less. But first, let's go over the news. Um, so big news for Xbox. They dropped their price. They dropped their release date. Um, this is huge because people have been waiting for this for so long. Specifically, you know, at least one side of the coin. We've been waiting for anything at this point because we knew that all it would take is for one side to drop all this information. And we knew that shortly after the other would come out as well. Yeah, they were playing chicken with it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we got a whole bunch of info now. We, uh, the Xbox Series X is going to be four ninety nine. The Xbox Series, uh, sorry, did I say X or S? You said X. That was right. Cool. Xbox Series S is going to be two ninety nine, dollars um, And then they're doing like this huge, um, so uh, what is it? Xbox Game Pass Ultimate is going to be $15 a month, which is Xbox Live, Xbox Game Pass, EA Play, and Project X Cloud. Uh, so that's going to be all for $15 a month. And then Xbox All Access is going to be the purchase of a console and you also get Game Pass Ultimate with that for either $25 a month for the Series S or $35 a month for the Series X. That is an amazing deal. I don't, I don't know what you think about that. But. So wait, the prices include the Ultimate Game Pass, the 35 and 25 I believe so. I'm not exactly sure if it's including it. Because otherwise, I mean, it's a 24-month deal. Right. If you did 35 minus 15, 20, yeah, that's almost the full amount. I guess that makes sense. That's like a really good deal. Yeah, that's not bad. That I mean, shoot, if I didn't have a computer, I'd get an Xbox. But I have a computer. They're clearly trying to target the audience that can't afford, like you know, a, a huge ticket price right now, to and they're front. also trying to make it as as accessible as possible to people who don't have a console yet. So that's kind of the route they're going for. I mean, they're ultimately they're trying to sell their their pass, you know, their subscription service. But mm-hmm. man, it's I think it's a really smart move. It's kind of a deal cuz it uh 20 times 24 is 480. And so that means minus tax and stuff. You're saving a good amount. That's not a bad deal. Yeah, so I mean, unless I'm, unless we're wrong, and that's for the good one. Yeah, ex- exactly. The X. Um so unless we're wrong, it's I read console plus Game Pass Ultimate is going to be 35 for the Series X and 25 for the Series S a month. Um so if we're wrong, we're wrong. But as of that, is of that information, that's pretty amazing. Um, yeah, yeah. And they've also announced their release date, November 15th, 2020, which is going to coincide with um, uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. They've actually moved their their release date up two days to match the release of the Xbox. That's cute. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's uh, my news. Well, news for me, PlayStation, quickly right after that, announced that they're going to have their conference on 916, hopefully revealing their info about uh, cost of their system and the release date, but they've only mentioned games so far. So right. who knows? But there is a rumor that they will, uh, Square Enix will be there and they'll be announcing Final Fantasy 16. Oh, wow. Um, but who knows? I'd rather them talk about Final Fantasy 7 Part 2, but that's just me. Right. I mean, I would, what I would love to see from the PlayStation 5 um, showcase would be just the console's UI and the features because we've seen all that from Xbox at this point, but we have yet to see what it looks like, what what are some of the special features that the PlayStation 5 can do because, um, you know, we have like quick resume on the Xbox um, mm-hmm. consoles and I think that's awesome. You can quickly jump between two games seamlessly and I really want to see what PlayStation has to answer to that. Um, but yeah, I, I really want to that's like probably the biggest thing I want to see. Obviously the price and the release date, but that's like number three on my what I want to see list for the showcase. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll get that. And maybe we'll get a a God of War Ragnarok teaser. Maybe. Hopefully. And then uh, also I want to see this thing in black too. (laughs) (laughs) 
It looks my cool mind, and white, but I want it in black, to be honest. My mind went right to Thor, so I was so confused for a minute. I'm like, that was the third movie. We already saw it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, they've announced that uh, God of War, the sequel, is going to take place in Ragnarok. That's pretty cool. I got to beat the first one. Please beat it. It's just like make it more linear, please. <laughs> you I can just like... you can just go go linear through it. You don't have to like yeah. But sometimes stuff. you look at two two missions and you're like, which one's the real one? Right, right. We well, could always uh, do like a um, a walkthrough or whatever if you want. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you know what we skipped is what we're playing right now. Oh my goodness! What are you playing right now? Uh, I played three games this week. Cool. Human Fall Flat. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> uh, Death and Taxes, which I recently picked up for the Nintendo Switch, is a, a game where you have an office job. Is the Grim Reaper? Oh, that's and you cool. get a bunch of papers on your desk, and you get to decide who lives and who dies. And like, there's multiple endings. Uh, all of the supporting, like, main characters are voice cast. It was only ten bucks for uh, the release sale, so I picked it up on the Switch. So I played that. Uh, and then I also played some more Tony Hawk. Cool. I unlocked uh, Officer Dick, who's played by Jack Black. Um, and then I'm like, because you only had to beat the the missions for your creative skater to do that. And I'm oh, like, nice. Okay, great. Now that I've done that, let's look. At, and then apparently every other skater has the same length of missions. Some of them you have to redo just with, with a different skater. So I think there's like 435 different missions you have to do. And sometimes the mission will be like, get a 200,000 combo at 11 different levels. <laughs> and like, I'm overwhelmed. Uh, I like, I looked up some of the other characters that I could play. Like one of them is uh, the alien from Roswell. And then uh, there's like a skeleton dude. Nice. And one website said Spider-Man makes a return in the game. And I got super stoked, but I think that was false. Oh. So I am no longer interested that sucks yeah i think i'm done with single player tony hawk for a little bit <laughs> all right yeah i've yet to touch tony hawk and i need to download it still i just i'm just down i'm just now downloading spell break because i know we were going to try that out um mm -hmm. at some point but yeah. yeah i gotta download tony Hawk. oh yeah i forgot i did i did play that uh the tutorial is pretty cool i was on it has cross play on all platforms you just have to make an account that's sweet and i did the tutorial and for some reason on PlayStation, it only let me do the tutorial. Like I beat the tutorial and then I went back to the main menu and I'm like, okay, play. And it's like, do the tutorial. <laughs> um, but I got to play around. I got to play around on the Switch and uh, me and my team won. Sweet. Yeah. That's awesome. It was pretty cool. That's awesome. I'll check it out. I enjoyed it. I haven't really played much this week other than um, I played a lot of Ghost Recon Wildlands. I'm actually currently recording my third episode for uh, the Backlog Adventures. Um on YouTube and uh, I'm pretty much done. I just, I think I'm just now ready to export the video. So look forward to that. It'll be on YouTube. Um, really enjoying that game. I'm also going to be returning to uh, Twitch, an official return. I have not picked a date yet or a time to start uh, back officially. Um, but please uh, stay tuned for that as well. Are you going to do consistent times or are you just going to do when you can? It'll be consistent times. It'll it'll probably go. It's honestly going to probably go back to when I what I was doing originally, where it's super early in the morning on the weekends. The early bird nerd times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. It'll probably just go back to regular time. But uh, the thing is, I may do a couple of random week weeknight streams. You know, maybe the nights that we play together or something. Cool, cool, cool. cool so we'll see how that cool. goes. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Cool. So, um, so the big the big uh, thing that we're talking about today is Ubisoft Forward. Uh, they had their second forward this year, and we're just going to go through the games and that they've that they showcased. And I'm thinking we could do the same thing we did that last time, where it's kind of like you're going to buy day one, you're going to get it on sale, or you're just going to skip it entirely. If that's cool with you, great. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Cool. Um, so why don't we start with Immortals: Phoenix Rising coming out December third on December third, 2020. It's going to come out on all current uh, and new gen and PC. Um, so this is the third person action uh, RPG focusing on Greek mythology. This was originally going to be Gods and Monsters, but they just completely wiped the the, the name. And uh, we got a trailer reveal and some gameplay. So what did you what did you think about this one? I wish I kept that title. Uh, but I hated the cinematic trailer. Like I thought it was the stupidest looking thing I ever seen. Uh, the song didn't fit at all. Emily was sitting next to me, and I didn't even say it out loud. She goes, "The song doesn't fit." And I like it. It was so stupid looking. Um, the main character 
looked a generation behind while all the details and the the bad guys looked great right um the only part that looked cool to me was the flying because there's not a lot of games that do flying and do flying well it's true um should are we talking about the post show stuff now or just the initial trailer just the initial trailer stuff okay. and um yeah because they, they did show some gameplay right after and i think there was extended gameplay at the very end got it okay so i'm gonna say at this point in the show i was a maybe on sale person okay all right <laughs> fair enough um yeah i felt the same way about the way that the characters looked it reminded me of like sims 3 mm-hmm. i agree like their their skin was super smooth uh, it did it didn't feel like it was something heading into next gen like i think the biggest thing it had going for it was like how dense the area looked yes it did um, there was a lot like, to look at just watching the trailer, I was like, I am not into this. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I do love that, like, you can customize your character and your gear. I thought that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the monster designs were awesome. But again, I am excited about the flying. Although I did notice, um, this is kind of like going to the post show, but they did show a little bit of, like, a stamina bar. So you're not able to just fly forever. It's more of That was going to be my next thing. I hate gotcha. that. Yeah, like, it's, they're gliding wings, not flying wings. That's, I guess, to stop you from just flying to the end of the game, but still. Yeah, it's it's basically Breath of the Wild uh, mechanics. So mm-hmm. this actually looks more like the kind of game that I'd play over Breath of the Wild, to be honest. I enjoyed Breath of the Wild for maybe like eight hours, and then it just <laughs> got kind of repetitive. Um, but repetitive in a way that it just felt empty. Whereas I feel like this world has a lot to look at and a lot more to interact with. Um, so I feel like this will actually hold my attention a little bit better, regardless of the fact that you can't just fly around the whole map. Um, but I did yeah. notice though at the end of the trailer that you see a bunch of other, a few other people with wings flying towards like the big monster. So I'm almost oh. wondering if they're going to maybe announce multiplayer later on. That'd be cool. Which could be cool because then it could be like an MMO RPG, but not as, not maybe massive, but you know, kind of like a uh, Diablo three where you're just playing with like your friends and you're all leveling up and. Yeah, it kind of looked like the the combat really reminded me of that. Yeah. Um... Not in a good way, but we'll very, get to very, that later. <laughs> very RPG, very RPG. So yeah. it could it could be fun. Um, but yeah, so uh, we'll go back to the post-show stuff. Um, for me, I think this would be either on sale. Now, this this would definitely be an on sale one. I don't think I'd buy this day one. Unless I had absolutely nothing else to play, I think I'd pick this one up day one. But No, I, I would never pay $60 for that game. <laughs> I'd have to be bored out of my mind, and that, that won't happen because I have... A backlog that goes for days so yeah. plus you have my backlog that's true i have mine and yours it's like i inherited it it's great <laughs> is that uh what the famicon hat you're wearing i am that is it must be nice to have their swag i'm sorry <laughs> no it's not your fault it's not their fault either <laughs> yeah jeff uh yes, the shirt that that jeff got sent for some reason just got lost in transit unfortunately um but the guys were so nice to at least try to send the merch to us i got mine jeff didn't get his unfortunately um but i might order one because it was pretty dope yeah you should that'd be really cool they'd probably i'd feel better that. about supporting them anyway right yeah and you guys should go support them as well go check them out plus, plus you're the only one that won the contest i was getting a shirt as a courtesy that's true <laughs> that's true i i signed us up for it and they were just like well yeah. since there's two of you guys that is fair that is fair um yeah so uh anyway uh moving on next game they showed was the prince of persia sands of time remake um, I'm going to start off with this one. I am Good. really disappointed <laughs> with what they showed uh, at the conference. It just, it looks like the first Uncharted game. Did you, yeah, did you play the original? I did. I loved okay. the original. I Was Was that huge... on PlayStation 2? Yes. I want to say okay. it was, yes, it was PlayStation 2. It could, uh, couldn't have been PlayStation 3. Maybe it was no, PlayStation I, 3, no? I think it was 2, and then I... I think the movie came out around the PlayStation 3 games. Okay, maybe. I, mean, I don't know. I feel like it, I feel like it was PlayStation 3. Um, but either way, I, I'm, I'm a, su- a big advocate of the game. I loved it to death when I first played it. Although, that was like my first reaction. I was like, what are they doing? Uh, mm-hmm. And then I went to go... Then I watched the, the video that they showed after the trailer, and it all said alpha footage at the bottom left corner. But, but a lot of games look better in alpha than they do on release and so if that's better this is the worst the other thing was too it's coming out in like four months so 
if they're showing us alpha footage, yeah, they must be. They must have not had time to like render everything or something in time for the showcase. So I have no idea their reasoning behind showing alpha footage. But I don't know. I mean, the team looks seems like they're super passionate about it. So I'm really hoping that we see a very different game by release. But I don't know. I'm it, very. It very almost skeptical. looks like they just slapped a new skin, but the combat and uh, the motions look so smooth that I know it wasn't just a reskin, but it looks like it's a remaster right instead of a remake right and so that was super disappointing i agree i mean it's it's a apparently i was trying to find out whether it was a remaster or remake and somebody uh somebody on twitter said it's a remaster but the title says remake so it's just very confusing like nobody's giving a straight answer as to what it actually is yeah but i wrote the same thing i was like the mouth there like there was good voice acting but the mouth movement was just like very robotic like thin facial movement (laughs) (laughs) yeah it just seemed very rough i was like oh man like this is not off to a good start with this uh with ubisoft's forward at all um so yeah uh, for this one if it has to look absolutely amazing for me to purchase this like so it definitely won't be day one it, I'm no, definitely going to wait for this thing to either look amazing or it's going to be a sale. No, I think no matter what, this is for a sale. Like this, to me, still looked better than Immortals Phoenix Rising. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. And, and you put that one for sale. And then this one, yeah. But well, I think I mean, the, 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 the people looked a little bit better in this versus Immortals. But I think the world in Immortals looked way more impressive than the, the Sands of Time. I just think I'd have more fun playing the Sands of Time. Well, because it's very linear, whereas Immortal yeah. Phoenix is very open world. Go wherever you want from the very beginning. So, and the action is just very swipe. They do a generic hit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, hate, I hate that. <laughs> well, Sands of Time, cool. I mean, like also too, like the whole reversal of time. It's so fun. Have you? Did you play the original? Um, no, I did not. So this would be. I, I just looked it up. It was PlayStation Two. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, super fun. But yeah, I. I've never played it, so like I think th- that is another reason why I'd be more likely to step into this one than you might, because you already like there's nothing new for you in terms of story. Yeah, no, it's all. I mean, to be honest, to be honest, I forget the story. I really do, because it's been so long. PlayStation Two, obviously. Um, but I just remember the gameplay and how how fun it was to be able to just keep going back and back and back and back until you just knocked it out of the park with the combat. It was so fun. Yeah. It was so it was like so rewarding to be able to just to go back in time and do that. So anyway, I'm really hoping it looks better by release, but we shall see. Um moving on, Rainbow Six Siege, they have Operation Shadow Legacy. It's a new season for Rainbow Six and they're bringing the infamous Sam Fisher into the mix. <laughs> Once again, another Splinter Cell that's not a Splinter Cell game. <laughs> yeah. And so this game was announced a while ago. Oh, Rainbow Six has been out for years now. Or uh, like honestly, for the a couple series, for... is this a new game? No, this game's been out for a while. Rainbow, this the is Rainbow a Six, R- Rainbow Six is not. Yeah, okay, so it's a series. It's just one game. There hasn't been multiple Rainbow Six Siege games. Correct. This is the this is the only Rainbow Six Siege game, and Operation Shadow Legacy is their their new season, kind of like Fortnite with like season two, season three. Got it. And it's not animated like the, the that video was. No, 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 no. It, it it looked amazing. Like whatever that was, like I wasn't sure if that was gonna be like a TV show that releases because if it was, I would so watch that. I I guess it just kind of is a way to announce Sam Fisher, but like I. It felt so out of place if it wasn't if it didn't lead to a TV show. I'm like, why am I watching this? Yeah, it was really stupid. Just show like, me some gameplay or something. Then, like, yeah, I, was, I have I, no honestly. I still have no idea what's. I haven't looked into it enough to actually even know what they're doing with Sam Fisher's character, other than they're just bringing him to the game. I have no idea. Um, I, I may have completely taken that wrong, but it's a new season for Rainbow Six Siege, and once again, it's not a Splinter Cell game. It's just Sam Fisher thrown into another game. I have no idea why they just can't make a Splinter Cell game. (laughs) So Operation Shadow Legacy is like an an addition. It's an expansion. It's like DLC. Got it. Okay. Got it, got it, got it. But the animation for that that, uh, short looked really cool. Yeah, I mean, it would have been cool if it was like an animated movie, but... Yeah, I would have watched that. I totally would have. So anyway, um, so uh, for this, I'm I'm not a big Rainbow Six fan. Not going to purchase it. That's me. Yeah, no, I'm never gonna play that. <laughs> I, I might, I might watch that show. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I would do the same, but I'm not gonna play the. I'm not gonna play the game. It's not for me. Just not my thing. 
Um, okay, moving on. Sp- Scott Pilgrim versus the World, the game 10th anniversary coming uh, holiday 2020. Um, so how do you feel about this one? This is the only thing that's worth purchasing, and I'm purchasing at day one. <laughs> Uh, I've been wanting to play this game again since I got rid of my Xbox 360 and was no longer able to access it. I've tried emulators. I could not play this game again, um, but I am super stoked. Um, I I think this would be a fun game for us to play together. Um, I like it's not a very like you know super long game, but it's a super fun beat 'em up, and the music is incredible. Right. I um, I, I vaguely remember playing this with you, but. Like I was seeing all, the, I was looking at the trailer and I was seeing all these like missions and levels that I had not played. I was like, well, this looks really fun. And it looks like they're also going to include the uh, knives and the Wallace add-on packs to this version as well. Yes, and the, those were in the original, but they were like paid DLC. Right. Um, Wallace is my favorite character. I recently reread all six comics in color. Wow. And then uh, I rewatched the movie, and then I watched the table read that they did recently. Um, so I felt like we were always heading in this direction, but I didn't. I didn't think this game was important enough, and the movie was important enough for this to happen. So I'm glad it actually is. Yeah, no, I, it's funny because we were talking about this coming back, like you know when those tweets were happening between the director and everything of the game or whatever. And uh, yeah, he he pretty much was like, "Yeah, it's happening," but I can't say it. Exactly, he knew. They contacted me. They contacted all of the developers. So we kind of it was almost like a leak, really, but they just kind of played it off, like no. We yeah. just, we saw just didn't say anything, and that's probably the best thing they could have done. But yeah, it was on people's minds. So, so yep, this is the number one. So uh, number I number one, number one. I would say uh, yeah. I, I I mean honestly, this isn't my kind of game to play by myself or one that I would purchase on my own. But I feel like if if you wanted to get it, I would probably go in it with you, like halvesies or something. I'll just get this one. You can get another one. Sounds good. <laughs> we'll get. It. I, I'm gonna get it on the Switch though. Okay. That's fine. Um, that's actually yeah. that's probably the best way to play it too. Yeah, and it, like it's not graphically intensive. Uh, I'm also gonna get it on PC. Nice. Um, in case it ever disappears again, because it'll always be on Steam. That's smart. Um, Steam won't go away. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Steam Which might not. go away. Steam will not. That's exactly exactly the case. Cool. Um. All right. Sweet. Uh. Moving on. Watch Dogs Legion recruiting. Uh. We kind of got like a little bit more in depth look at how you're going to be recruiting the citizens of of the britain and um i don't know and like the type of citizens we're going to be recruiting which i thought was kind of cool um this will be coming out october 29th 2020 um i really do think it's cool that each character has their own special ability and you have to kind of customize them by giving them the weapons and tech that best suits them which i thought was pretty Mm -hmm. cool um and i'm honestly thinking that this could be more fun just picking the team like that actually could be the fun part of the game is finding the people that you want to put together. Cause it could, it could be something where you're making the team as ridiculous as possible just to make it like stupid fun. Or you could make the team as cool as possible. Like, um, you know, <laughs> like, like the ideal scenario of a, of a super spy team kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. so I don't know. It seems like making a strategic decision could be fun with this as well. Like choosing which player to send to each mission. Like, you know, they showed like a, a like a getaway driver. So that could be good for all the driving missions etc um but yeah I, and i thought the the funniest thing was that they're bringing back aiden pierce from watchdogs one and i was like oh jeff's gonna love this yeah <laughs> i'm back <laughs> so exciting you know what was the stupidest part was that music video that they showed before the trailer i did not i was like why why is I, this a thing i was like fast forward fast forward fast forward <laughs> like i it I was, was like, okay yeah i did not enjoy it um it turned that almost turned me off the game completely and i even liked the guy when he was like talking in the beginning i'm like oh he's like an activist he's a cool guy yeah totally um and then he's like now we're gonna do my video game in the system yeah i was like uh okay um it seemed to imply that the characters you will pick will have personalities and become part of the story right um and if that's the case i think it's really cool yep um, but it sounds like they're already going to have so many different characters that you're going to have to follow. That's going to be hard for me to care about anybody. That's kind of what I, that's my only issue with this game so far. Yeah. So I'll play it on sale. Okay. But I don't think, even if you got it day one, 
it would be a long time before I touch that game. Yeah, I like I've I've, I've said before, uh, and I'll say it again. I'm the, I think Ghost of Tsushima was my last AAA game of this year that I'll be purchasing until I purchase a a console. Um, so I think this one will also. I'm also gonna wait for this one. Uh, I may not wait for it to go on sale, but I'm definitely gonna wait till 20, uh, 2021. If you're gonna wait till 2021, you might as well just wait for a sale. Uh, That's true. I may as well. I, mean, like, I got my backlogs like PlayStation stacked, so. sales happen every week. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It will be. I bet you it will be thirty dollars inside of six months. <laughs> Probably. If it doesn't do well, then I may not buy it at all and just be like, "Yeah, I'm good." Yeah. So we'll see. Um, cool. All right. Uh, the next one on the list, Writers Republic. This was actually the last one they showed before the post show. Um, gonna be coming out February 25th, 2020. The Extreme Sports MMO um what did you think about this one uh honestly it was my number two pick of the whole thing like i thought it looked super fun i was like this feels like fall guys mixed with steep right right um i put steep on steroids <laughs> that's totally fair yeah because like i played steep and then none of my friends played steep so it was just me by myself so like a normal game with no direction at all so i never played it i played steep and got bored it's still on my system just in case anybody decides they want to play but <laughs> um all by myself that commentator during the downhill part was super ridiculous oh like, i know <laughs> it showed a part where he zoomed in and then just went down a little path and he's like i can't even begin to describe how technical that was and i'm like <laughs> all right uh i really like the varied sports they have um those rockets are super weird oh the jet yeah, like everything else was super grounded, and then they're like, and you could ride rockets. <laughs> you could ride this plane that you strapped your back. I'm like, at least give me a, I think a wingsuit would be amazing, but I don't, I don't want these rockets. I right. And I thought it was weird too that they had, um, like regular bicycles, but not motor, like, like motor bikes. I feel bikes, like that's like going to be bikes. like a DLC thing. Like, I think it'll keep going. It has to be. They can't just, they can't just end it with bicycles and dirt bikes. Like, they need, like, you know, well, dirt bikes, I guess, but, you know, electric dirt bikes or gas mm-hmm. dirt bikes, whatever. Um, but, yeah, this looked awesome. They, they're going to have, like, trick battles. They're going to have X Games competitions, community challenges. Um, and I also loved that they're going to be using real GPS for the locations to match oh, the actual cool. parks. Yeah, they mentioned that, I think, in the trailer. That Or, no, they mentioned that in the dev, the dev video afterwards, um, saying that all the national parks that they're taking from and they're putting all these these worlds together they're using real GPS. So those locations are going to actually be in the real world that you're, you're going through. So that, that was really cool. Um, but that massive bike race at the end was hilarious and absolutely chaotic. I was like, this is basically like a sports battle Royale. <laughs> like you're just trying to race to the end and survive kind of like fall guys where everyone's just like, it's like over a hundred bicyclists just trying to get to the end. It was pretty funny. I had some grand theft auto online race flashbacks though. I was like, Oh, oh. it's like when you, Ultimately, you get to these, and it's less about how you do and more about avoiding other people. It's true. And that's so annoying. But that's like Fall Guys. Yeah. But, and I, yeah, and like for some reason, that's fun. But I'm <laughs> like, it's just different. different on a setup. car or a bike, it's just so different. Well, you're going like a thousand times faster compared to the how slow the, the Fall Guys run. And then they have like on the fruit one where they have the ramp going against you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this one looks fun. I mean, I don't know if I would even buy this ever, to be honest. Just because I prefer story games. I prefer games where they're more of experiences, not so much as like, you know, comp- competitive games. Um, but I think if you purchased it, I'd probably give it a shot. No, yeah. I actually almost considered, depending on the price, I might buy it day one. Gotcha. If it's 20 guaranteed I'll buy it day one. Um, if it's 30 I'll think about it. If it's 60 I'll wait for a sale. Fair enough. Yeah. Awesome. Um, sweet. So then uh, all we have left are like, they showed a couple things on the post show. They showed extended Immortals Phoenix Rising uh, gameplay. What did you think about that? Uh, I'm really glad they added that footage at the end because it convinced me that I will never, ever play this game. <laughs> um, like just watching them slash at the characters in the characters, it, like react so generically. I hate that style. And I know Diablo does it too. And, and like, I don't, that's, Especially when you're doing it by yourself, it feels very hollow. Very repetitive. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 it's really funny because I was slightly disappointed when I saw that. And I was like, oh, man, this looks kind of like really and, repetitive like, to the point of where it may not be interesting. But I'm really hoping that the world 
it, like exploring the world on its own and the gear that you can equip and get and like the abilities you can get i hope that actually makes up for the um the gameplay cuz i feel like if that if that is spectacular i may actually look past the 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 combat but yeah i felt the same way i was like mm this combat cuz honestly like i thought the camera was up way too high i really wanted like to feel like the camera was with the character mm-hmm. and i feel like it was just too pulled back of a camera like i wanted i wanted breath of the what not breath of the wild i wanted um horizon zero dawn camera you know like fighting these huge monsters and you're like looking up at them not like the camera's top down almost and you're you know fighting this big these big you know monsters or whatever so yeah i don't know and the hud i thought the hud was like probably the least attractive thing of the entire game it just looked so generic i don't know what it is but i can't figure it out it just looks odd it's just it was almost distracting to be honest like i'd I'd probably play the game with no hud to be honest because it just was kind of ugly looking but i don't know yeah like when you watch the cinematic trailer i think part of what turned me off is because i knew the gameplay would never look like that ah yeah, yeah, yeah and the worst part was it wasn't even close to that right like, like you're never going to be hiding behind a statue behind one of these things it's just going to like come up and march up to you and start like <laughs> same repetitive motion until you get its hit points low enough right so yeah that's going to be a uh, they replaced the uh the big hip song with the most uh bored sounding narrator of all time <laughs> he was so boring i forget and what then, he said ouch that hurts <laughs> I was like, what in the hell? <laughs> like, where did you get this guy? It was like, dude, it's like they heard dude, me. Joey's when... sick. We need you. Uh, okay. <laughs> dude, they don't like the song. Can you narrate it on the fly? Uh, sure. Great. Let's go. <laughs> Ouch. That hurt. I could not believe he said it that way. I was like, uh. I can't believe he said it. Either. If you're trying to sell this game, you're not doing your job at all. Yep. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I, here's the thing. I do applaud Ubisoft for trying something new because it is kind of getting old. Like their, their same IP over and over and over and over again. So mm-hmm. I do applaud them for taking a risk, um, which is kind of why I'm willing to give this game a chance. But again, the gameplay looks kind of rough and repetitive. However, if the world and the, the loot and the abilities are fun, I would probably definitely give this game a chance still. It felt like an MMO without the MMO. Okay, I, I I see that a little bit. I see like, a little bit. I did like, like let's how make they were let's make options. the writer game an MMO instead. <laughs> right. I did like how they showed that you could have options though. Like they were saying you need to do this, so you could either go do this mission or this mission, and you get the same result. Yeah. So that that was kind of cool, but you know, de- depending on how many how how much variety is there there's going to be, that could make or break the game as well. So I don't know. The more I talk about it, the more I'm thinking maybe I'll just wait for it to go on like a really good sale. Yeah. No, I don't know. I'm never going to play it. You could like give it to me for free and then say, give it an hour and I'll say no. (laughs) No. (laughs) Jeff, you just hang up. (laughs) It's gone. Um, Cool. Um, All right. And moving on to the last thing that they showed, it was kind of more like they were just showing like a gameplay video of this guy playing the game. Uh, Roller Champions, which kind of looks like Rocket League on roller skates. Um, Yeah, it was like Rocket League mixed with Roller Derby. Uh, the the commentator was god awful, but um, I hope there's a legitimate announcers. He was really giving it his best shot. Uh, but I would play this game if, if it was super cheap or if it was free to play. I was gonna say this is the only way I'd play this if it was free to play. Yeah, I like. I think it looks. I think it looks fun. Um, hmm. Like like if it was a couch co op party, not co op, but couch game party that you could do with friends. That'd be cool. Kind of like, you know, Madden or whatever people play now. Right. I haven't played, I've only played one sports game in so long. You sounded so old. Whatever people are playing now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, imagine my shock when I found out it wasn't Tiger Woods PGA Tour anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually also shocked you didn't know what Rainbow Six Siege was. Oh, I, yeah. That's, I, I hate tom clancy sam fisher none of that's to be honest like i i'm on twitch all the time and that's one of the biggest competitive shooters out there right now so i feel like unless you're on twitch all the time it's not gonna be you know out there in the open all the time in your face so fair enough 
I get that series mixed up with the Ghost Recon because it's. I think it's all like the same kind of stuff, right? Yeah, kind of. Rainbow Six is uh, um, all first person right mm-hmm. now, um, that and sucks. Uh, yeah, Recon's all third. So, although Breakpoint, I heard really sucked, so I'm probably just gonna skip Breakpoint and wait for them to make a better game. Um, I'll wait for the that's next. Always a good move. I'll wait for the next Ghost Recon game. <laughs> Saves you a lot of time. Yeah. So if you were to rate this uh, this forward Ubisoft's forward, how would you rate it out of a ten? Scott Pilgrim itself is a 20 out of 10 so if you give 10 points to the forward then it's a 10 but um if you took out scott pilgrim out of the mix i would give it a four okay i was was a five yeah i was like i'm pretty stoked about that writer's republic game um that was i actually did like the watch dogs footage um it just seems so ambitious it i totally agree like i'm really hoping watch dogs as well because it's it seems really cool um yeah. but riders republic looked amazing like the the graphics looked stellar yeah i remember looking and see i remember hearing the news about prince of persia and i'm like that's a really good choice i and then i watched it and i'm like oh okay <laughs> okay like i think that being good alone could have raised it to like a six so, same here and i'd probably been like seven or eight if that would have been if that would looked amazing because that would have been the whole show for me pretty much yeah um but anyway yeah i'm gonna give it a five four for jeff cool well that was ubisoft forward uh, before we move on to give it an hour, we're going to take a break with 10 words or less um, <clears throat> where we basically have to, we have a game we've just we've chosen and we have to give the other person 10 words or less, uh, depending on when they can guess the game. And ten, if you get it, if you guess the game immediately, it's automatically what is it, 11 points or is it 10 points, 10 points, 10 points. Right. And then every time you have to get another word, a point is reduced for the total. Um, so, uh, why don't you go first, Jeff, and just start, uh, giving okay. me, giving me your I can't words. decide if I made it really easy or really hard, so I'm really sorry. Okay. Um, I have a bad, I have a hard time with this game for some reason, so. Depending on how bad or good you do, I may change some words on the fly. Um, okay, so the number one word I have is death. Death, okay. <clears throat> death. Okay. Hmm. And we're just guessing games, right, from the get-go. Yeah, yeah, you get you get uh you get a guess and then you're good. Okay. Um I'm gonna say mm, death. Uh Dark Souls. No. Okay. Artificial. Artificial, okay. Artificial. So death and artificial. Probably a robot that dies or something like that. You gave me Detroit Become Human last time, but I'll, uh, I can't even think of anything else. I'm just going to say that. No. Okay. Sigmund. Sigmund. Oh, man. Oh, man. I've heard this before. Next word. Doctors. Death, artificial, Sigmund, doctors. Hmm. I've played this game, obviously. I mean, yes, you have. Right. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's kind of the whole point. Um, artificial. That's what's really that's what's really bugging me, because the doctor's really isn't helping entirely. What? Well, okay, next word. Wish. This is really really not helping. <laughs> Oh, Sigmund. That's what's really driving me nuts. Like, if I could just remember what Sigmund was. All right, next word. Lifetime. Wow, that really did not help either. <laughs> Dang it. Um, If you haven't gotten it by now, I think it's going to be bad for you. It's <laughs> good. Sigmund, man, that is driving me nuts. If only I can remember Sigmund. Doctor's Wish, Lifetime. Oh, 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 oh. Um, To the Moon. Yes. Oh, my God. The remaining words were Memento, Astronaut, Memory, and Moon. Wow. So you got nine, eight, seven, six, five. No. Yeah. So you lost a point when I gave you... No, sorry. You got six. Six, okay. All right. Well, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. 
right? Six? Yeah, I'm try- I can't figure it out. You got it on the sixth <laughs> word. Well, uh, so I think on the sixth word, you got five points off. So you got five points. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> it was really hard to math. Yeah, right? All right. Unless we go like, unless we go like, you do it. Well, yeah, because if it's the sixth word, then yeah, that's five points. Yeah, because the first word's free. Right, exactly. Cool. All right, here you go. Create. Sims. Are you serious? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Is there a mirror? On my like, are you able to read the read the the page no. with my reflection of my glasses? Like, no, <laughs> you know I can share my screen if you want to make sure that I'm not cheating. But <laughs> like, there's so many games you create things, so many. But what's the number one? It's The Sims. <sighs> can you give me the other nine words? <laughs> Build relationships. <laughs> I would have gotten it by then. Family, death, design, marriage, woohoo, sul sul, <laughs> and simulator. Okay, that's super funny. <laughs> Create. I I vote we never play this again. <laughs> You've guessed two in a row. It got twenty points on the first one. Oh, can I ask you? Did all of my now that you know the game? Do all the words I gave you make sense? I forgot the name Sigmund. To be honest. Sigmund was the corporation that, uh, yeah, and then like artificial dreams. See the artifi- Well, the artificial thing that was kind of threw me off because I was thinking artificial intelligence, yeah, not artificial memories. Yeah. Um, so that threw me off. Um, death, totally. That makes sense because obviously mm. he was dying. Cool. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't. I mean, like it was like unfairly hard. I feel like artificial was slightly misleading. Misleading, maybe. <laughs> yeah, because it, it is. It's not because it's not generic. It's it's it's. You really need you really need the other word for it to to use artificial. Otherwise, it's just that could go anywhere. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I mean, that's the whole point of the game is to pick a word. But I mean, could I could have I could have picked uh, I don't know what word I would have like. I don't know what other word I could have used except for like maybe build instead. Yeah, I don't know. But I might have I might have said Sim City if you said build. <laughs> <laughs> then maybe that would have thrown you off too if I'd have said create afterwards because you'd been like, well, it's not Sim City, so and then you would probably not even think about Sims. You'd probably just go on to something else. Yeah, that was uh, great. That was I'm five more points ahead. I take it. <laughs> You're a lot more points ahead for the year, so I know. I mean, yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, uh, that was great. <laughs> Moving on to the grand finale, give it an hour, uh, where we each pick a game for the other person to play for one hour, and we review it, and we decide whether it's going to stay in our backlog or leave the ba- or not touch our backlog. So, um, Jeff, why don't you start with uh, Hellblade Sinuous Sacrifice? Uh, so, I'm going to say I sat down and I was really not excited to play this game. Um, I The eyes looked incredible. Uh, like right off the bat, like every time you looked at her, her eyes not only were like extremely like detailed looking and vivid, but they were very expressive. Yep. Um, cause she didn't do a lot of talking herself. Right. Um, I wrote down, I think this hour is just going to be watching her on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> the, game, the game looks amazing. It looks so good. It, yeah. Like, the wow. first, the first 10 minutes was, uh, just on the boat and you were like watching and I kind of zoned out even though they were talking the entire because the voices just kind of kept, were like, she's not going to do it. Yeah, all the and whispering then, uh, in your ears. And then they showed, like, all the credits. The one that stuck out to me was, like, the mental health advisor, which was, like, the first thing they listed. And I thought that was super cool. That was, yeah, their whole point. Uh, I kind of like that it doesn't hand anything to you. Like, none of the button prompts were there. You just had to figure it out. Nothing. Unless you paused, and then they were all there. First thing you right, saw. Right, right. That's true. Uh, but I didn't notice that till later. Uh, I will say the ugliest thing, the most unattractive get- thing in the game is the water. Like, okay. I, I don't know what about like the water. It just looks so, I don't know. It didn't look, <laughs> it didn't match the environment. Like, okay. And it wasn't when you were like wading through the water. It was when you were climbing more toward the top and there was like a mini waterfall over a cliff. Okay. Okay. It was just, it felt like too clear and not interactive enough, even though you're walking through it. Um, What really 
brought me into the game was the first combat. Okay. Where I was like, okay, that was cool. It was very intimate. Um, it reminded me of God of War, but with a little less impact. Right. Um, I didn't, maybe I just didn't figure out how to do it, but I didn't like that I couldn't unfocus on who I was fighting. I couldn't like run around them. I had to face off with them. And for a while I was getting my butt kicked because I couldn't figure out R1 was block. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think you're able to un- unfocus though. I think I okay, was able to. It later it really hurt me because I was fighting two of them at once and one of them was behind me and I would get hit and then it automatically faces them and then they, the other person would hit me and it automatically faces them. No, I, I'm pretty sure you can change the focus. I'm almost okay. positive. I, I just never figured it out. That's fine. Um, you only had an hour. <laughs> I don't like that they use text to explain if the rot hits your head, you lose. I think they could have explained that in the dialogue of the girls or the guy who was giving you information. Gotcha. Um, it was like everything else was so immersive and it wasn't hand-holding. And then all of a sudden, like, you just see giant words. <laughs> um, it was. I agree. That was a little like, what? But honestly, I kind of appreciate it because I got so lost playing it that I think I would have missed it possibly if they wouldn't yeah. have done that so i don't know i, I kind of felt uh i i, I kind of felt uh you know differently about that but i get it totally That's right. get it it kind of it kind of um, takes you out of the experience finding the shapes to open gates is the least fun mechanic i've ever played in my life <laughs> <laughs> like, i was just like i spent a long time on that first one because i really didn't get what i was supposed to do and then i moved around and it's like oh you're close gotcha and i don't know i feel like there are puzzles and then there's that and i just i did it became a hassle instead because like the second one you're looking for a y with a thing through it and immediately you turn around and you see the people on the cross and you know it's supposed to be that but you i couldn't figure out i'm like emily's like maybe you can get the tree to line up and i'm like i think you're right but it turned out it was just a different guy on a cross that i had to line up a pole with right um did you play with headphones no, because oh. Emily was watching. With me. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I could oh. see. I, I think that was how it was designed because the whispers were supposed to be yes. coming from around. Yeah, here. you have, you have to play. You just have to try it one more time with headphones well, on. I promise. I will play the rest of it with my headphones on because I will play this game. Awesome. I will be adding it to my backlog. I don't know that I'm going to play it immediately, but I will play it. Yeah, you just need to like even if like you just pick it up like tomorrow just for like half an hour just so you can hear the voices. Like even yeah. if you want to start it over again and then just listen to that, it is absolutely amazing. It was seriously the the finding factor between playing it and not playing it for me. That's fair. Yeah, I just like something I I my opinion on the game was so low until the first fight though. Gotcha. And then I'm like, "Oh, okay." Yeah, the fights. I do like this. When you actually get the hang of the fights, and when you actually use that, like that, um, that special ability for rage, it's. Ooh, I haven't gotten there yet. Okay. The the there's when you use your focus, there's this attack that you do where you become like super strong. It's Mm. awesome. It's I think I think focus like freezes them in time or something. I forget. But it's you when you get the hang of the combat, you really get the hang of it. You feel like a badass. So it gets awesome. The combat gets really fun. Cool. And, oh, I was really upset when I was fighting two at once. I, the First of all, they were hitting me back and forth. And then I got pinned against a wall or like a gate. And the view was from behind the gate. So I couldn't even see them oh. anymore. And I couldn't fight or parry. Oh, man. I was just, I just had to hold block until I knew they hit me. <laughs> and then I was just start swinging. <laughs> um, so, yes. There were, I had some issues, but I definitely will be playing it again. Um, yeah, so, yeah. That's great. That's yeah. awesome. Um, sweet. Okay, cool. Well, I played Horus. Um, this game was great. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Mr. Ail- Mr. Ailton's story. Uh, no, Silton. Mr. Silton. Mr. Silton's story was absolutely hilarious. Um, was, he was like, the one in the van, right? Yeah, the robbery with his name on the van. Like, <laughs> also, when he asked me to get him mushrooms, then he winks at the camera. <laughs> Like, he was, was by so, far my favorite character. I thought I was going to hate him because in the beginning of the, day, the game, the doorbell's ringing and he's just smoking the cigarette and the other guy just gives him the angry eyes. <laughs> he's just like lazy as hell. Uh, but he was by far like one of my favorite characters. I loved, yeah, like part of his story when he showed Horus his music and Horus just was sitting there terrified. And then later they're like, we're going to show you music. And he goes, after my experience with Mr. Silton, I wasn't sure I was going to like it. <laughs> 
and you were right. The narrator is fantastic. Um, it's just really charming. Like you said, that's pretty much the best way to describe it. Um, yeah. I actually had some anxiety on my first run trying to save the girl. Um, I actually, <laughs> said she can't I actually be... gasped when I electrocuted her. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, Oh, okay. I get to play this again. Okay. She's okay. Yeah, We're fine. They established that she wasn't immortal like you. So yeah, I, and I was if like, you died with her once she was done. Yeah, you know, that's I, was what like, I, thought. <gasps> <laughs> I was like, no, oh, okay. Yep. But yeah, it was great. Um, I loved the soundtrack. I love the pop culture uh, movie references. Mm -hmm. I loved all that. And then I also just love how they're constantly reminding you that you're playing a video game. Like that was just great. It's just, it's just so fun. Um, But in general, I just love these kinds of games that have like smart tutorials where they embed them in the story. So, so well, you know, because they just slowly introduce you to the buttons and the the mechanics without making it feel like you're playing a tutorial. Mm -hmm. So they did that perfectly. I thought that was great. I love the art style. Um, What's up? How I, the thing about the art style is sometimes it would zoom in on their faces and because it's pixelated, it was just the pixels got bigger and I couldn't understand what some of them were doing. Yeah, no, I know. I agree. Like there were times where it would get so close in the pixels. I was like, what is happening right now? This looks a little ugly. Like I couldn't understand what was happening, but yeah. I got the idea and I actually appreciated it because they were tr- they were teaching this they're tr- teaching. They were treating this pixelated style so cinematically mm-hmm. that I thought I was like you know what? I get it. I, I see what yeah. they're doing. And I actually found it funny that they were yeah. zooming in so close. And it was just like this mess of pixels all over the screen. So mm-hmm. I kind of appreciated that, but it ran, uh, it played beautifully on my PC though. Like, yeah, it, yeah. Beautifully. Good. That was my biggest worry. Like, even though it's like a simple looking game and it's like 16 bit, like mm-hmm. there's so much to this game. Um, and I heard like, there are several different play types. Like there's like an aircraft simulator part. And like, so there's just so much to the game. Uh, how far did you get? So I got. I'm not gonna. Spo- I'm not gonna spoil anything for anybody. But I got to the the first big turn of events. Got it. And okay. That's where I ended it. Oh man. Yeah, I know. That um, was like. Did you did you play like the first part after that just to see where no. it was going? No. Okay. I woke it up. Introduces and that's it. It introduces a new mechanic from there. That's really. It kind of threw me off, uh, but I really grew to like it. Nice. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that's what I got. I was like, man, that was intense. Like, it was just emotional and it was great. Anyway, I'm not going to spoil too much. Um, but yeah, definitely going to finish this one. Adding to the backlog. Yeah. Good choice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, I think I mentioned it last time. Like, I played an hour and a half and then I woke up the next morning and I said, Emily, you have to watch this. And I played the hour and a half again in front of her. <laughs> <laughs> well, Emily even tweeted me. She's like, I really hope you love it. It's cute it's so cute and it is it's really sweet it's it's really charming like if anybody's looking for a really sweet charming video game that's more of a movie feel Mm -hmm. play this because i mean here's the thing the game aspect of it can be really challenging at times i'm just timing the jumps and everything Mm -hmm. but the fact that there are these nice breaks of of movie cinematic style um you know breaks Mm -hmm. uh it's great it's it's so the act the, the voice acting is just great and it's just the one guy so it's really good um, but yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so definitely good, good. I'm glad you enjoyed. Yeah, we yeah. both we both uh, added games to our backlog today. Have we that done this be first. before? I, I like don't we... think we did. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, if we're wrong, please tweet us. <laughs> you can reach us on social media. <laughs> did anyone on social media play either of these games? Nobody. Well, if they did, they didn't tell us. So oh. <laughs> you've made Jeff sad. See what you've done. Um, but yeah, but in the future. Um, we're going to be, you know, continuing to do this. So we'd like you to join, you know, join up and play with us. Um, so for this week, Jeff, I'm going to have you play police quest four. You don't have to play one, two or three. They don't really tie into each other. It's the same universe, but police quest four was the last game they made. It's a point and click action adventure, murder mystery. It's on steam. I've already purchased it. I'd like to do is download it. Okay. Uh, I was not expecting that. So in that case, I'm going to have you play Death and Taxes. Okay. Uh, which I talked about earlier. Um, so that one, it's it's kind of relaxing and chill in a way like um, coffee talk. Um, but it's less dialogue based. And there's multiple endings that you can get from this game. I heard it's only a five or six hour experience. Cool. But I'm really enjoying it so far. So I think you're going to like it. Nice. Yeah, I was yeah. I was originally going to pick the same game for both of us, but I changed my mind at the last second. <laughs> you did not tell me. I know. <laughs> I hate you so much. I told you the very last second. 
<laughs> I was like, I eh, know it's great. Um, but we can play that game another time because the other one does look awesome, which I'm not going to say. I don't want to spoil it. Um, cool. So if you're going to play Police Quest 4, it's on Steam. It's actually on. It's super cheap for the entire um, series. Um, and Death and Taxes is also on the Switch. And is it anywhere else on besides Switch? Good question. I don't know. Okay. Let me well, look. Death and Taxes, take a look. Um, we're going to be playing that this week. Please play along with us for an hour if you can. Um, leave us your reviews. Uh, you can send us an email to contact at backlogandbeyond.com or you can uh, message us on Twitter or Instagram. I will be posting our Give It An Hour games on Wednesday uh, or tomorrow, I should say. And uh, there you can comment you with your review and we will read them on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and for any, uh, it's on Steam. You can play it on Mac or PC and it's also on the Switch, but I think those are the only two that you can play it on. All right, fair enough. So it looks mm-hmm. like a Switch. There's also a demo, so you could play the demo and let us know how you feel about Perfect. it. Perfect. So there's a free demo. Do it. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Uh, as always, um, you can catch, you can get a hold of me on all the social medias, uh, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, at Adventure Hawkins. Uh, for Twitter, it's Adventure Hawkins without the E on adventure. And Jeff? I'm Zavadavadoo. One V, two Bs, two Os. I like it. <laughs> That is all the time we have for today. Um, I don't actually have a joke for you, unfortunately. So, uh, oh, I wish I had one. I don't have one. Uh, well, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs>